Hi everybody, how are you doing? Jo here again. Thanks for joining me today. Time we had another little crafty catch up and we're going to do a bit of, well, I was going to say watercolour painting. You know what I'm like. It's my attempt. It's my full watercolour painting. We're just going to have a play with some um, inks, um, lovely Lavinia stamps. And I really wanted to do a card that could have quite sort of a masculine feel because again and again, I keep getting messages and it is always lovely to hear from you. Thank you. But I keep getting messages requesting designs that are suitable for men's cards. So this is what I, I thought we'd have a bit of a play with. Now, I must admit, today we're going to be using um, the gorgeous Lavinia watercolour card. Now, this is it. Um, I don't know if you've tried this, but it is a fantastic uh, watercolour card. It's hot pressed and it's lovely and smooth, so it's perfect for stamping on. And I've got to be honest, since I started using it, I haven't used any other. And, and that's just me being honest. Um, as you know, I love to um, yeah, mess about with inks and water. Um, so now on this one, I actually, the design, it's on a seven by seven card blank and my piece of watercolour card is five and a half inches by five and a half inches. But I did wonder if it would look nicer with a larger frame. So the actual one I'm going to have a go at creating where we're live together is I've got a seven by seven card uh, piece of watercolour card and I'm going to put that on an eight by eight card blank. I know you like to know the sizes. So I've got my envelope here, look, ready, stamped with our Bogart or Bogart. Do you think, which, what do you think, how do you think you pronounce it? I'm no good with pronunciations. It's lovely we get the names, but I almost need Tracy to do me a little um, voice notes telling me how to pronounce it. So um, Bogart sounds nicer, doesn't it? But anyway, our little chap and I've put him on the front look. I just think, again, remember, if you stamp your envelopes up, um, permanent ink, it's the Versafine Claire, I, I just think that really adds to the, the, the design. I can't speak, can I? So, as I say, we're going to just do a larger size. This is the original, and again, that was five and a half inches. Sometimes I do that, you know, do you do the same? You wonder, I just wonder if it had a bit more space around it. You know, I love white space. So what we'll do, as I say, this is the watercolour card. Now it is um, sort of a creamy colour, but don't worry. I mean, I still think it looks lovely matted onto a white card blank. So, and I've, the first thing I've done is run my Sharpie line round. Um, you don't need to see me do that because we, we do that so much. And also, you know me, I like to do that at the beginning. So A, it's done, but B, I know I'm not going to spoil my design. And what we'll do first is we'll do our stamping. And again, he, this chap is just gorgeous. Now I know some of you don't like frogs, so, or toads, I'm not sure which he is. He's got some novels on, so I think he might be a toad, but I'm not sure. I'm sure he won't hold it against me. Now let's put him, I don't want him to be exactly in the centre, so I'm just going to move to the right a little. Because I have a thing, if things are in the centre, they have to be dead centre, otherwise it messes with my head. So if I offset it, it won't look like I tried to get it central. And again, he just stamps beautifully, look. And then I thought I'd team it up with, we've got a lovely stamp, the bull rushes. And I just thought for sort of next to a pond, they would be lovely. And again, it's good. Look at your stamps. I mean, I've had these for, for years. These are one of the first stamps I bought. And it's good to get stamps out. Mix your new stamps with your older stamps. So we'll just stamp this. And again, I'm stamping in black. And just going to have one at this side. And this is going to be quite abstract. So we'll have that one there. And then just so it's not too symmetrical, we'll have two at the other side. I'll put one here. And then just stamp the next one. I only want the top of the next one. 
So, I'm just bringing a well used look piece of copier paper and I'm just going to angle that a little bit, just a bit lower, I think, and put that there. Yeah. And that's all the stamping I'm going to do to start off with. Give that a bit of a blot. We'll get rid of that. And in fact, even though I've blotted it, I'm just going to bring my heat tool in and just make sure it's dry because I'm going to be adding some water and I don't want to smudge it. Now, this is where the fun starts. So I've got some of my Elements inks, ink pads and I'm going to use a combination of colours. I'm going to be using graphite is perfect. Do you know what? If there's one colour I would recommend to everybody, it's graphite. It's one of those colours. I always call it an unsexy colour. It's not the one you're going to, when you look at all the colours, that's going to jump out. But do you know what? I use this so much and it's perfect for adding shade. And you can blend it with any of your other colours to make them slightly deeper. So graphite. We're going to use the russet orange just a little. The main colours we're going to be using is the Della Blue and the Blue Lagoon. And that's going to be for our um, water. Then we're going to come in with a little bit of Lime Punch mm, and Bermuda for our little frog. And all we're going to do is put some of this. So we'll add some Della Blue and then some Blue Lagoon. Just onto my mat, straight onto my mat. And then what I'm going to do is with my Lavinia brush, and this is my watercolour brush, and this one's the half one. It's quite a nice, um, good brush, good size. I'm just going to add some water straight to my watercolour card, just around Monsieur Frog here. Now, you could mask him off, you could use masking fluid, but I'm just going to go straight for it. And I'm going to add some here to the bulrushes just to underneath where they finish and then just a tiny sort of like trickle here. I don't want too much there. Then I'm going to come in with the lighter colour. Now, which can you remember which was the lighter colour? I think it was the top one, wasn't it? The Della Blue. <laughs> and we'll just go, we'll say the waterline is about here. And again, this is a very loose technique. So I don't want to cover the whole area. I want to leave some white. And I'm doing wet on wet, so all that means is I'm adding wet ink and water onto wet card. And we'll add a little bit just down here. And as I say, that's my nice light colour first. And we'll just go for a little bit. This is roughly going to be my sky. I'm not going to cover the whole thing. Can you see? Yeah, so I'm just roughly covering this area. And again, I'm dabbing. I'm just dabbing because I want to give it quite a loose sort of feel. That the sky, the water, it's all very, as I say, very loose, very natural. And then we'll come in with the darker colour, the Blue Lagoon. And we'll just add a little bit round here. And I'm just going to add Again, wet on wet and just let those colours blend and let's just see how they go. And then we'll add some in the sky. Again, I'm just sort of dabbing, just dabbing the colours and that's a little knock at the door and we'll just ignore that. You know, it always comes, doesn't it? We always get, whenever I decide to do a YouTube, you can guarantee there's a delivery or a knock at the door. <laughs> now, we just want to add some clouds in the sky. So if you remember, if we take a piece of kitchen towel and just scrump it up, and that's just going to take that water and that ink and absorb it, and it'll give us a shape like a cloud. So we'll just have another one here. And this is very forgiving. If you didn't like the way that it had worked, you can take your water and ink 
and you can add some more look over the top so we'll add some more there and we'll just make another sort of cloud shape and we'll press that down so don't be hard on yourself just have fun and I think the thing with this type of design is just have fun so again we've got that lovely cloud shape there and what I want to do is add a little bit of orange to the sky I'm just going to add some of the russet orange now you can add drips if you want to add drips look or if there's an area that you think is too wet you can just dry that up with your kitchen towel and again you get these lovely shapes I mean look at that just looks like wispy clouds can you see how it's starting to look and again just have fun and experiment now I know we haven't got a definite line between the sky get Mr Inky Binky just to dry my brush we haven't got a definite line between the sky and the water so I just want to add just a little bit just so it, it sort of gives me an idea here something to work off I want a bit of water behind him there we go and that just gives me a better better idea right so I'm just going to clean my brush now, as I say, if any of you are watching this and you are watercolour trained artists um, or mixed media artists, I know our Lisa is absolutely fabulous. Um, please excuse me. Like I say, I don't know anything about watercolour apart from the fact I just love using inks and water. So and I need to make that clear because I don't want you thinking I'm trying to teach you something that I don't know anything about because, you know, I just play. And for me... It's all about just playing and getting a nice design. Now, I just want to add a little bit of yellow to the sky. And as you have the colour in the sky, it will be reflected in the water. So we'll just, but you have to watch because obviously I'm using an orange and orange, you know, yellow and blue makes green. So I don't want it to go green. So I'm just going to add a little bit of the orange. And then what I'll do is just dab it with my kitchen towel just to dry it a little so again we've got that reflection of the colour without going too much and we'll just add a little bit here and like I said I don't want it to go too too green I just want that idea of the reflection oh it took a bit much off there but like I say look if you take too much off just come back in the this card as I keep saying is so forgiving and you can just play and the thing is you know really have had so many messages of people that the mojo's gone and this is just such a lovely way to play and be creative and have fun and honestly it is just as easy as this and what i will do now is let's have some graphite and again this is lovely because it all goes straight on my mat and i just want to come in and i'm going for a let's go for the next size brush so which one's this this is number six and we'll just come in with a little bit of graphite and we'll just add a little bit of graphite here sort of under the bulrushes and a bit here sort of ground them now I know they're in water but obviously it will be darker around them now if you want you can mix your blue in with your graphite and as I say it will give you a darker blue so we want a bit of shade around our frog so again we can come in just add a bit of shade and then let's come in some of these blue areas and just add a bit of shade and that will just help to build up you want to keep some of the white areas but just by adding some darker it will just help to build up that idea of, of the water And again, I'm just sort of dabbing and letting it all blend. Can add some there, look. And here, I want to keep the white area underneath, but I'm just going to darken this area here. There we go. That looks nice because we're starting to get that idea of the water. And if you want it to run anymore, just add some water and just let it run. If there's any areas that you want to just run a little bit more. Right, we'll just 
just come in again to just reinforce our horizon line there. more dark there and then what I am going to do is with my blue I'm just going to add some splats here now again if you're not a fan of the splats you can leave these off you know me I like a good splat and I'm just going to go in opposite corners and while I've got the ink I'm going to come in with my card blank because I like to run it across and I'll just add some in this corner here turn it round and add some in this corner here and then that can go over there to dry now if I bring the finished one in just to remind you so this was how the splats how it ties it all together I say if you're not a fan of them you don't have to add them it's just obviously I, I just like them but again it's all personal preference the whole point of us sharing these ideas with you is that we can all there'll always be things you like and things you don't like that's what I love about workshops because you get to try things and it's like by watching you know these YouTube videos Tracy and the rest of the design team we just come in to give you as many ideas as we can and you know we know you're not going to like them all and this is where you can pick and choose and just see how you feel I mean I'm just going to use my heat gun just to normally I would let this dry naturally it would look better but just for the purposes of us today but while I'm talking so I'll just dry it off a little bit but like I say, you'll be able to watch and decide what designs you like, what designs you don't like. And we really don't expect you to like everything. But it's so nice. It, it might even just give you an idea how to do something a little bit different. Right, so that's just dried that off a little. So I'm going to come in with my greens. So we'll have some lime punch up here and I tend to use the upper part of my ink pad so I don't get much ink on my mat because I'm very stingy and I don't like to use much of my ink. And again, we'll come in with the lighter colour, this lovely, oh it's lime punch, it really is zesty. And I'm just going to, and this is the smaller of the paintbrush, this is my favourite, this is number one. And I'm going to try and do this and not bring my head over the camera. So I do apologise if the top of my head suddenly comes in short. And I'm going to paint him with that light green. But then I'm going to mix, and these inks, oh, they just mix beautifully. Blend a little bit of the dark green in down here, look, where we'll have shade. And we'll just come round here. And again, you're building up. We're going to almost give him a bit more character. And I always think he's going to have a bit of shade on his nose here, look. And again, you will take your time and really enjoy doing this. You know, and if you've had a stressful day or you've got something on your mind, this is such a lovely thing to do. Now, I need a bit more grey. And this is where, like I keep saying, your graphite will just come in again and again. And I'm just going to mix a little bit of the graphite with water. And again, just bring it at the base here, look. And you'll see how with the, the green and the graphite, again, we're just building up, giving him, and just under his eye, look. You're just giving him a bit more sort of 3D detail, a bit more depth. And then with that graphite, we'll just add a little bit more around him. I've just given that idea now. And you've just got to get a bit of shade in the water here where he is. I'll add a bit more here. And you can just keep building this up and up until you get that effect that you want but I'm happy with that 
So I'm just going to, now again, normally I would dip my card in this ink because we don't want to waste it. But like I keep saying, when we're here together, you don't want to see me spending ages. I don't know why my little YouTubes that I think are going to take five minutes, I seem to end up here for sort of 30 minutes. So it's a good job you get your brew and your cheeky biscuit, isn't it? Because we do spend a while together. I must admit, I am liking the more white space around this size. So I'll give it a little bit more of a dry, front and back. Like I say at home, just go off, make yourself another brew. I'm just giving it a bit of a dry. And what I want to do now is add a little bit of colour to him. And I'm going to bring in my um, gel pens, the Signo pens. Now these are absolutely brilliant. And I'm just going to colour his little nodule bits here. And I'm just going to random. We'll have some green and there's a lovely violet. So let's just have a couple, maybe a little one there. I like this bronze colour. Maybe have a, a couple bronze and then gold. And I just find these add sparkle, but for any delicate little bits. And that just gives him, look at him, he's so cute. <laughs> And what we want to do now is just add a little bit, um, just checking how dry it is. As I say, normally we'd wait till it was properly dry. And we're just going to come in with our chalk pastel pencils and just going to emphasise things a little bit. So in the sky, if you want to just emphasise the orange, say, I'm going to come in and I've just got a little stump here so you can use your fingers or you can use your, your, your stump or your biodegradable um, cotton bud. And that just emphasises that. And again, if I want to emphasise a little bit in the water, look, maybe just on the horizon there, we'll just come in. And it's these little finishing tricks and again, I keep saying this, but you will take longer at home and just make. But you see how that just depth there, just want a bit more there. And blend it out, yeah. And the same here, I just want a little bit of highlight there. And the beauty with this is, with the backgrounds, you know, no two are alike. And again, I love that. Um, normally I'm a, a very sort of controlled person and I know a lot of um, crafters mention that they are that sort of, they like to be controlled. So sometimes it's nice to do something. It's like the gel plate. You don't know exactly what you're going to get. We've got an idea, but no two look the same. And I think it's nice to do that and almost have that freedom. I'm going to add a little bit of blue there. And then I'm going to add some white to my bulrushes. And the same with these, just to highlight on the black. Now again, my card isn't quite dry. You'll wait until yours is properly dry. If you want to add any white into the cloud area, again, just add that and blend. I must admit, I like that cloud. I don't think I'll want to add any there. I love the way that's gone. But what I am going to do with my black is just add a bit more shade here. And the same around the base of the bulrushes. Give that a good smudge again. I don't want a definite edge. If your edge is too definite, again, come back in with your blue and then just blend it in with the blue. And you'll see how forgiving that is. And you see how it just builds up so lovely. And just take your time. What I do want to do is I've got a, a clean colour here. Now these are, are water brushes and you can actually use these to add shade. But because the water brushes, you can bring... Your paintbrush back in 
and just blend a little bit more. So if you're worried about harsh lines, just blend. So the edges here, look, I can put this clean colour and then just get my water brush and just blend that out. Just some areas where I want a little bit of shade. So even here, down at the bottom, if I just want to give the idea that we've got shade here, look, I can just blend this and just add a little bit, just to give my splats a little bit of dimension. Just giving them a bit of shadow underneath. Now, you may not necessarily notice that, but if I bring it a bit closer, can you see how it just gives them an extra bit of dimension? And that's what we want. We want to just give that dimension. And I'm going to bring my gold signo in now and just around, I want to just almost add a little bit of highlight. So this is just sort of first thing in the morning and we've got that lovely shimmer on the water and on the bulrushes look. So just down one side, I'm just going to add the silver works well for this, but with having the orange in the sky, I thought I'd go for gold tones. And I'm just going to highlight the top of his, so it looks like he's got that water just dripping. And we'll add a little bit in here. So again, if I bring that up, I'm hoping you can see a little bit. And I do think the whole thing together really starts. Now, on my original, I brought in my lovely fairy charm. And I'm thinking, I'm going to do the same because what I'm actually thinking is this would make a lovely Valentine's card. And I'm thinking, Mr. Rice, he knows I love frogs. So. so I'm thinking just by bringing this in, I can turn this into a Valentine's card. I'm just going to put this just so it's hanging down. And I think if I just put it there. Perfect. So again, we'll come in with the, the gold. And just on this edge of the chain, I'm going to add that gold. And around there. And then with my white chalk pastel pencil. The ink's a bit wet. I can add that later. But it's just lovely the way this builds up. I do think it's such a such a lovely effect. And then just to finish off with, I want to add some more white highlights. Now you could use your, your white gel pen. You could use your white Posca pen. But I just thought I'd add a little bit of white acrylic paint just to almost give me a little bit more dimension. So back in with my, my paintbrush. And so on the heart, look, we'll just add a tiny and just on my bulrushes at the top. And it just gives me another layer, another dimension. So I've got the white chalk pastel pencil, but then I've also got a little highlight of my white paint. And I'm just gently brushing it on. So again, we can add some round here. Just, and I don't want to overcook it, but just to give the idea. Now, if you've got glossy accents, they look lovely when added to the water. There's all sorts of things you can use. And again, it's all about using what you've got in your stash. And mixing and matching what you've got in your stash. And what I want to do here is see if I've got any areas, look, where I can add a bit of white highlight to it. And again, I don't want to overcook it. Just let's add some here. And again, I'm just dabbing it on. Just to give that idea. Let's have some round the bulrushes and again that can wander over here 
and there where we've got the white just coming down here let's have a look at that maybe just that little sparkle you know on the horizon where you get that little bit of must admit it'll soon be spring won't it and the, there'll be frogs born in the ponds and must admit the daffodils are coming up here which is lovely the snowdrops are out they're beautiful but all these things getting ready for in spring and again look at water i do think nature gives us so many ideas well it does me the trouble is i can never replicate it but do you know what i have fun trying i really do i'm happy with that i'm going to leave that Sometimes you just have to walk away. You know, if you're never sure about something, I would always recommend leaving the project, going away. Well, I would say have a brew, but I think we've probably had about three or four while I've been doing this, haven't we? Um, but maybe just having a break and then coming back to it. Because often you can over, I, I use the expression overcook it, but you can overwork it. And um, we don't want to do that. So if I bring that here, look, I would just put that on there. And I just think that's going to make a lovely Valentine's card. And I'm going to leave it without a sentiment. On my original, I start, stamped the sentiment, art is a story waiting to be told. And I'll bring that one in and put it next to it. But on this one, as I say, I'm thinking this really is going to be Carl's Valentine's card. So if I bring the two in, let me see, you know my camera work. <laughs> I definitely need a lesson in camera work. There we go. But it is interesting how the two are different, isn't it? And, and as I say, that's what I love is that no two are the same. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you'll get some of the watercolour card. Honestly, it's lovely. It's so lovely to work with. And um, it just means you can have a play. And you've got your element sinks. Great for the gel press but brilliant with the watercolour card. So thanks for joining me. Thanks as always for your subscriptions. It, it, I just think it's wonderful when the numbers of subscribers goes up. Oh, I get a little cheeky scream and um, a little squeal. So thank you all. And thank you for getting in touch. It's lovely that we've got such a lovely crafty community on here and that we can all help each other. So you all take care. I hope you have a good week and I'll pop back and see you soon. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now.